thing about the book is that it's it's an attempt to bring together two separate research stories. The first of those would be the, the story of the Irish language amongst Republican prisoners and Long Cash. What role did the language have? What impact did it have amongst the community of prisoners? And how and why did they use the Irish language as a means of struggle during their incarceration? And, uh, and that story uh, has never been accounted for up to now. And the second element of the story, this the second research story which is being brought together in this book is the story of the Irish language community revival on the outside in the aftermath of the hunger strike and how both these stories correlate and overlap uh, looking at the impact of the long class prison struggle and the hunger strike and its aftermath on the community revival in the north of Ireland. So what I was trying to find out when I began the research was why would people in a working class area uh, when everybody all around them was embracing the Anglo-American culture and the, the Catholic Church schooling system. Why would people bring hardship or extra work upon themselves to be involved in a community revival? What would the motivations behind that be? What, what, would, what would be the illogical motivations behind that? Why would they do it and how, how, how can we understand that based on the context uh, in which they did it? I'm an ex-Republican prisoner from the 1980s. And I, my first introduction with Fergal was one day when I got a phone call from him. He introduced himself as a, as a doctorate student at Queen's University and uh, explained his project to me and asked me would I be happy enough to meet him to uh, share my experiences with him, which I did. And uh, I was quite impressed with the, uh, the, 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 the comprehensive and the, the systematic way that he went about his research. Uh, it, it's an outstanding rewrite of his thesis. It's a brilliant analysis, but the most important part of it, the core of it, is it speaks to truth and the acknowledgement of that truth by listening to the testimonies of those who were directly involved at the time and whose struggle uh, is, 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 is exemplified by the work of the book and the way in which the book itself becomes a vehicle for their voices to be heard. It's certainly, um, it, it's, there's nothing like it um, at all and nothing like it has been done before and it's a very very powerful tool for anyone who is still in the, um, the business of, of trying to increase understanding of the politics of the language and the politics of uh, decolonization. I was, I was delighted that someone had the presence of mind to, to put it to paper and to have it published um, because I think it's uh, important that people are aware of, of the history, not only of, of the Irish language, but, but also of the impact that, uh, that colonialism has played in the country. According to Jim McCann, this summed up our approach in Cades 11. It was about helping each other learn together. We moved away from the heavy compulsory anti-English language mentality. The motto in the Giltak was Gilig mas fedger, Berlin mas ga. At this stage, you were doing about 13 hours a day learning in the language. I don't want to exaggerate, but we reckon these are the lengths imperialists went to destroy the language and reason from this that it must be important. When you look at imperialists all over the world, the first thing they try and do is to destroy the culture of the nation and attempt to replace it with their own because it makes people easier to manage. I mean, I learned I was a political person for the first time while I was in jail. Republicanism revealed itself to me while I was in jail. Not only did I learn our language, but I learned why I had went to jail, what was keeping me in jail, and for the first time, began to break all these things down. 